Yeah. I think, though, that it's pretty loose. It's kind of like you with head wraps, you know? You don't know why you make the next head wrap exactly, but you're in it. For me, even making one head wrap is, you know, an astronomical leap. So it's hard to do it from the external, but you have stuff that you do. So my poems are arise out of me being a poet, you know? And then I think that's where I have to take responsibility. You know? I got ways we can eat, counting ways on the beach, learning names we can meet. I'm booked, I'm booked, I'm booked, I'm booked, I'm booked. Send a text to my phone, saying, "Can you are you home?" I'll do it again. HWC 2017, 3, about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. I'm over here. I'm going to watch it off because um, even though I think me and Kevin came up with the idea at the same time. In the living room. Um, what's that? In the living room. Exactly. That's why Kevin will go second. He gets the dope position. He can be fun some. Anyway, <clears throat> I'm just going to talk for like three minutes about uh, being a poet and what I think that means right now. Because uh, I think that goes a long way to understanding why we create art anyway, you know. Because it can seem like a pretty passive thing to be creating art, um, but it is definitely not. And I understand the road of poetry, I'm sure everyone understands their own thing, but when I first started writing poetry, um, I was young, right? But I didn't think about it as poetry until I was like 18. And now I think about poetry as even a completely different thing than I did then, even though I've always had the passion to like do it and pursue it. Um, but yeah, I think that change is dependent on you know the community that I'm in. And then as to why I do, I've been doing one poetry book month for the last five months is because it's given me the opportunity um, to go through the different ideas and figure out their purpose. I, I think that ideas have three parts. There's the blueprint, right? That's your thoughts and your mind. They're, they're circling around this concept. We're always having new um, blueprints in our head, different ideas of the way our things are going to get out there. That, is the forever, right? Um, but they get elevated on the second level, which is when we start turning our blueprints into things. We start manufacturing, you know, we start creating real objects of our things, whether that is a class, whether it's a book, whether it's a event, whether it's a video or whatever. We're turning our things into different ideas. And if you're a poet, the easiest way for that is books, of course. And I did my first book when I was 24, launched it, some friends bought some, and um, I was really cool on that. That was the model, right? You put out a book, you've kind of done it. But not anymore, because books are so easy to make, you know? Um, so while I realized the purpose of getting my thoughts out there, now, with the ability to make the thing, what drives the next iteration of whatever it is that you're making, whether it be a book or product, is the purpose. I had the first purpose was just getting my stuff out there, and that was super easy, you know? Um, way easier than it's ever been in time, and I was able to make my thing into a thing. But that didn't satisfy my purpose, and I didn't really know what that was, but I started reaching for it after this first book. Um, and so I started reading a lot more poetry, and that was my next iteration, and I got to get feedback. People would hear the poems, I would see their faces as I was reading things like that. Um, and that helped me get to the point where I am right now, where now I'm creating even more iterations, because each one teaches me more about what it is that I'm doing. And I think when you start letting your purpose guide your next model, um, which is just good consumer empathy, you should know what your people are thinking. When you start letting it guide, especially in poetry, I think that that changed the way that I write. It changed the fact that I started writing um, before a certain group and what I knew they were going to feel and to try to accomplish 
some feelings that were more understandable and fit into things. And now that I write poems for actual events, I'm writing them for the energy of the room and for my energy at the time relating to all the chaos that is going on um, in my universe and the order that I'm implementing upon it. Oh, this is good stuff. I'm going to be able to watch this back <laughs> and be blessed myself. Uh, but finally, um, now, uh, where I'm at with um, my poetry, it can kind of be explained in the fact that I'm going to do a collaboration book for the expansion tour that I'm on with Mr. Composition. And these poems are going to be um, read specifically, not just for a certain group, but also to create more atmosphere around the troops that we're going on so people can follow along. Anyway, I say all this to say, because I'm not even close there yet, to, to really getting to the final purpose, you know, that will allow someone to read it and become inspired in the exact way um, that I'm thinking. So I'm not there yet, but all this to say, I think that is the path. Um, and I think when you follow it, well, let me not say path, so Jesus would say, that's, that's the strategy, that's the process. And when you implement steps in this process, I think it does take you to, it allows you to sell more, because it's fitting more into people's lives, and selling is just, you know, other people investing in, in the value you've created for one reason or the other. And it teaches you to be more empathetic with your products and, and to take yourself out of them um, with your art and to take, take yourself out of them so that you can realize that they belong to a lot of other people and more people when you think about um, who exactly that kind of person is. Yeah. So, write more, create more, and deliver it more to the consumer and in lots of different ways so that they can enjoy it and you can be about what it is that you're doing. And don't be limited at all in, in, in the actual creation. I think the best thing is to realize that ideas in your head don't matter um, because they're existent just off of who you are and let the iteration, the creation process be more of the time that you're spending, especially in 2017 when making is just becoming easier, especially with poetry. I mean, it's way too easy. Poetry to books, it's too easy. Um, and then with everything else too, canvases are easy to get. It's cheaper than it used to be. You don't have to kill a pig and shave him and hang him in your yard for 30 days. Or I don't know how they make canvases. But, uh, <laughs> is there a pig on it? Skins. But, uh, yeah, anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think super, super fast making uh, and then structuring, but then it becomes structuring the way that your products are in lots of different ways and so that people can see them and get in there and, and you can be built up off the value of the value that you're creating. Blah! HWC, oh wait, I'm gonna have to cut out the little, because that's not going in. <laughs> HWC 2017 Holiday Writers Convention. Before the chaos, this is Kenya. Four days to go, this is just the top of it. If this ends in a really crazy way, this will be like the perfect documentary ending. Like, during it, aliens arrive or something, or some other spaceship lands. You're like, oh my gosh. It'd have to, no, it can't be a spaceship. If Tom Hanks came to the last day, and then he brought other celebrities, and we all started. I don't know, we, we all like ended up on a bus to New York for no reason. I don't think we can do that, it's not there while his kids and Lena has work. That's true. Kids can ride buses too. <laughs> so that's cool. Oh, sure. That was purpose. So that third part is purpose or vision. Um, and then letting that guide. Let your iterations guide your ideas because they're chaotic and they're going to exist all over the place. 
but they need to be wrapped up in iterations and creating, and then let your creating be wrapped up in the purpose why you're creating it. And I think that you find just authentically by implanting yourself in, in communities that are doing what you want to do. Wow. And there are a lot of them, despite what's going on, um, like in politics, there's a lot of actual small groups, and you really, really dive deeper and deeper and deeper into your community, into the artists in your community, then it, it just gets crazy. It, it gets crazy, it gets really cool. And a really dedicated and constant collaborative group of 50 creators is enough to sustain itself. It really is. The buy-in created and the reinvestment that will occur um, will be enough value even to leverage your activities in other ways, like going to other people's events and, and um, buying groceries at H E B. It's getting a little abstract there, but <laughs> any other questions? Yeah. I like questions. That's kind of like the the metaphor right there. Question. Yeah. What would you say or do you have any impact that really inspired you when you were writing or when you were writing your work? Is there anything that you use for inspiration? Yeah. I think though that it's pretty loose. It's kind of like you with head wraps, you know. You don't know why you make the next head wrap exactly, but you're in it for me. Even making one head wrap is, you know, an astronomical leap. So it's hard to do it from the external, but you have stuff that you do. So my poems arise out of me being a poet, you know. And then I think that's where I have to take the responsibility. I'm, I'm blessed with my passion, which is to write poetry. So now it's my responsibility to focus that passion into different things. What makes this model better than the next? In basic ways, like for poetry, it's like what makes my poem better? Am I, you know, getting better as a writer? Which means a lot of different things. And I'm sure for head wraps, what makes your head wraps better? You say objectively better fabric, better things, and stuff like that. And then the vision. Why am I doing this? What is my vision? Is my, you know, the cool vision with head wraps is like I see, you know, women wearing head wraps. All oh, I see 80 percent of women wearing head wraps 20% of the time. And then that, wrapping your idea of creating around that kind of vision gives you the power to be like, all right, what does that mean? I'm making a night head wrap, right? So, or I'm making, these are day wraps. This is a, this is a brunch wrap. This is the brunch head wrap for ladies. <laughs> you know, so it takes the idea of creation to a whole, I'm giving you guys magic right now, but it's a breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> but that's actually really cool. More questions? From the two. We can show that there's only two. I was thinking about lines so in the video that there were like hundreds of people. Yeah. Throw in the cheers, the, the fake cheers. Yeah, but it's actually unnecessary because when I put the video online and it gets views, people will immediately like, oh, there were two people there. But if you see that 500 people watched it, they're like, oh. Anyway, but um, yeah, so just take security in the now. Are we secure? Do we believe in ourselves? Yes, we do. We do. I know that we do. No room for doubt on that one. We have confidence abundantly. Okay, great. Um, I'm gonna let you do yours, but I have to run really quick. Okay. Um, for me, that's selfish. It seems like it's been a good for you guys too. Yeah. I think I had some thank yous to do, but I already did all of them. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to do this little presentation thing. I hope you guys enjoy it thoroughly. And I really liked how that turned out with, uh, with Calvin. That was so great. It was Jamie. I think I had smaller times available for them. And I think my two they just turned into two really cool, long-form 
keynote, keynote kind of type Q and A's, which I think is going to be really fun. So I look forward to watching the footage and stuff. Um, HWC 2017 footage. So you're going to have to use three fingers. This is a Mac, MacBook. And then you're going to move the mouse onto the thing and you swipe with the three fingers. Does that sound like it's going to be? First you have to, because it's like the screen onto the left of the yeah, Apple products are kind of hard to use. So, bear with me. How's it going? What's it saying? <laughs> I should have given you a tutorial first. I was like, it'll probably work out. Very cool. Well, I'll get into the idea a little bit. Um, what, what, I, what a lot of this year has been, has been one of the really coolest experiences in entrepreneurship. For me, uh, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm kind of a new entrepreneur. I've been doing it almost all my life. It's very much related to who I am and how I see myself as a human being. Um, but this last year, okay, that very sort of, if you hit Keynote, not that this is the Keynote, that's the app in Apple, though, so that's what it's called. I don't want to make it seem like I'm being pretentious. But yeah, I'll we'll just click the thing that says, yeah, almost that one. It's very similar. Maybe I should just. I'm gonna do it. You guys, you don't mind. You don't care at all. So I'm Kinyo and I started Project Four like a year ago and things like that. And it's been my journey. The reason I created it is because I study culture. Um, I think culture is super important to any business that you're building. And my strategy for building um, my business is to sort of focus on culture and the stuff as it were. That writing took a lot out of me. A little bit more than I was expecting. But anyway, let's go to the, <laughs> the next slide. I started out, I did these workshops. I'm just going to go through it really fast. I'm going to do this workshop, I think, tomorrow? No, on the 8th. So if you come up on the 8th, you'll get to see it. I did these speed workshops. And they kind of illustrate my idea of how like, someone can move from being an entrepreneur into owning their own idea, you know, and creating a very physical thing inside of culture. Uh, we can keep moving. I'm going to pause on this next image and get some, get some rest. That's why you don't run too much when you're looking like this. Hold on. Let me just... <laughs> okay, let's actually go back to the other slide. I was moving because I wanted to breathe, but I still have things to say. So I focus on different things depending on like what level of influencer you are, which is the basic person who's starting. The first one is social media, blogs, blogs, I love it, I think it's super important. And then I move on to collaboration, creating events, hosting workshops. In general, it's a lot about getting as much content out as you can. And so the next thing, which is, the next slide, which is that weekly Kinyo thing that popped up, that's my like weekly blog that I use to kind of compress every crazy thing that happens in a week into my life, and I try to keep it up. I mostly do it every week. I think it's good to set standards for yourself, even if you don't reach them, uh, because you're going to fall somewhere on the plot line. So the next uh, slide is, and I broke the speed up into different things, which is lanes. I talk about how I think it's really important in the, in the process of building community to focus on different levels. I'm really big on the idea of focusing on the 50 people who you're going to interact with 
kind of regularly. I think that's super important. It allows you to invest in a circle that in turn creates power for you because those are going to end up being your primary customers. And even if they're not your primary customers, if you continue to seek out that group, they end up being a good sample or a good um, avatar for what your primary customer would be like. And if you're paying attention to them, you won't really have any confusion as to why your product isn't hitting. Because you'll be like, oh, let me look at these 50 people who I decided to embed myself in in the group. Why are these 50 people not engaging with my product? And you probably will know my name, Dave. Why is Dave not buying the new pair of slippers that I made? He doesn't like them. Or whatever, I don't know. <laughs> but in general, it's a good way of figuring it out. And so with, with the lanes, I focus on social media tagging, commenting, volunteering as the basic, and then I move up from there. I have the idea of creators and other things. You have to come to the workshop, we'll just continue. Um, but also I have this image, which talks about the different sort of levels and how I think that plays into social media, which is on the next slizzle which is repost over comments, over likes, over nothing, which I think is just a super basic, dope way of understanding how social media is a good reflection for your engagement in the community. Like, obviously, if you're getting nothing, that is the worst, that's why I put that in there. I just had that up in first, but then I was like, the over nothing makes a lot of sense. Likes, um, that's the basic thing. I think the people from you're 50, that's what you're looking for. And even when you're engaging with other people, the likes are super important. And then the comments and reposts. Okay, let's continue. Um, okay, and this led me to the idea of orbit, which was, okay, for an entrepreneur, what are these different things? What is this, how does this manifest in the community? Basically, there's groups, participation, and then there's the people who see your stuff and the next level of the creator. Then in the ideal parties, there's Tours, um, the distribution and the shipping, and the, the partner thing, there's sponsorship, uh, retail opportunities in place. So the idea of the orbit is leveling up your ability to engage with um, the people who are in your group. And again, you have to come to the workshop because I like to personalize it for people, but hopefully I can kind of personalize some of these ideas in like a QA after this. So let's skip to the next thing. This is how I manifested a lot of my. Um, Things over the course of this year. Hi2 is a t-shirt company that I'm wearing right now. They make these awesome t-shirts. Uh, and I was able to partner with the guy who makes the t-shirts. And that's why the messaging is really good, which is why I like partnering with him. This shirt says Global Citizen. That shirt, that one right there, it's a black shirt, which I put on a black background, which was ingenious. Uh, but <laughs> that is actually on the shirt. So it says, what truly matters, skin color religion. That's one of the shirts, and so I'm really into that. How you treat others, that's high too. And then I made my time machine, which goes along with my workshops, and it's kind of like a guide um, through your day. Because mindset and the way that you structure yourself and the way you approach your day is a lot like time travel. And I have an open fascination with time travel. That's why that's called time machine. That's my awesome. I had another picture that shows it as real things. That looks like I've never built a real one, but there's, there's other ones. Okay, <laughs> the next slide is idea parties, which is something that I came up with because um, I realized that collaboration between brands weren't happening fast enough. And I hope you can check out Project4.tv so you can see a little bit more about um, what's the, what that is like, and then it gets into the idea of sharing um, ideas beyond your city and getting more into the orbit, which uh, I'm going to bring some composition up here after this next slide. I'm going to talk about it a little bit and hopefully you check it out. Um, but the next thing on the slide right there is the Bravo Tipping app, which is a company that I started working with recently, and it would be super dope if you guys downloaded uh, this app. The Bravo Tipping app is pretty dope. It lets you tip local entrepreneurs. And by reaching out to them, it's sort of a collective way of saying there's enough people in San Antonio who believe in community, who want to do cool things, that you can, um, that we can reach out to these brands who are outside of our regular um, orbit, our regular city, um, and things like that. I don't know what that means, and things like that. 
But that's it on the broader tipping. I'm going to leave that image up there so that hopefully you follow them, and then I'm going to get a little bit into some of this expansion tour magic, and I'm going to let Kevin take it away because I think he's really cool. But I'm going to start with it. About a month ago, me and Kevin started. Oh, there was one other thing that I wanted Kevin to do. Okay, Kevin, go back to the computer really fast. <laughs> this was actually almost the coolest thing of the entire presentation, and I forgot it. He's somewhere in between top and bottom. Let's see. Aha! <laughs> Do you think you can move over to the next uh, thing? I can run up there very quick, but I'm ready. To the, you swipe it with three fingers. Do a three finger swipe on the notepad. Uh, one more time. One more time. Oh, click it. Do three fingers, just swipe to the left. Yeah, one more time. Again. Perfect. Okay. So, uh, it kind of all led me to building this, uh, this, this, this platform through Idea Partners. Project 4, you check it out. We make influencer media, we make videos, we make blog posts and things like that. Idea Parties is um, our way of streamlining some of the brand connections and then the influencers' um, desire to get out of their city. So if you check it out, you can kind of use this like a website, CHWC. Um, that's a little ad. I made all my own banner ads now because I realized that putting ads in ads actually like conversion just isn't worth it unless you're creating media for the entire world, which will allow you to siphon off a small portion of the traffic. And then, anyway, it's not important. That's the working behind that. But I'm really hyper on the community. So if I'm getting 30 people who are coming to the website for me, is it worth it for me to get 0 0.001 cents for them to click on this ad? Or is it worth it for that one person who clicks on it to land on another page, which is going to be hyper relevant to them? So that's why I'm I make my own banner ads. But anyway, I just started doing that a little bit ago. Oh, that was cool. Okay, <laughs> go back down a little bit. But um, on this page, I showcase some of the things that we're doing um, with idea parties. Um, and then I say, these available for other companies that can have their things on there. And there's tour dates, you can see some of the merchandise that we have. But if you go up to the top, this is the part that I'm really excited about. And this is really cool that I'm going to be sharing with more people because as we've been going out, other influencers have been, other entrepreneurs and musicians, they've been asking, hey, you know, how can we go with you? So I added a little functionality in that direction. So if you click on the industry directory button, very cool, you'll see that um, there's two options. One, which is build an event, which is for venues, brands, it doesn't really matter what it is that you're doing, but it gives you the opportunity to create event in a super simple way. Like imagine you have a, a t-shirt company, right? And you want some local influencers to come into your t-shirt company and to do a small open mic, which I love the belief that creating events is the highest form of advertising and connection. Honestly, you can sponsor a Facebook post um, which is cool, and I still think it has its place in the market, but I believe getting one or two real bodies, I think it translates in conversion to like 50 or so people. I think the value is just so much more when you have people in the room. Um, there's other stuff down there. If you click the build an event button, just so they can kind of see what it does, especially if you guys watching on video. I should have recorded what Kevin was doing, but anyway. Um, you can build an event, you can select the attendance right now, there's only two options. Um, you can kind of check out the options a little bit. Oh, add it. Check the select attendance. <laughs> the select attendance. Okay. Right there. Underneath. Oh. Well, there you go. It says you have to be an idea partners member to join, which is cool. Now you know how much that costs. I didn't want anyone to see. Actually, it doesn't matter. It's fine. Do you want to go back? Oh, sweet. That's perfect. <laughs> but uh, in general, you saw what it looks like when you can build an event, and then the other option is to go on tour, which if 
you get to see that really quick, is for different influencers. We have set tour dates because in December we're going to a certain number of cities, and then also in January we're going to go to a certain number of cities. So there will be a, a number of different selections that you can choose. So I'm really excited um, for you guys to be able to check that out as, as entrepreneurs, as vendors, or as musicians, or as poets, to be able to join us on the road when we hit some of these other cities. I think it's going to be super awesome. That was basically my presentation. I wanted to bring Mr. Composition now to chat a little bit about his idea on expansion and what he's been doing through Dab Troll. So he's going to do that and then we're just going to mingle the night away. And I thank you, you guys for coming to HWC 2017. Plus one. Next year will be way. It's going to be equally dope. The dopeness will just be spread over a large quantity of people. This is, yeah, this was actually, and I think everyone bought, I think only you were the only one who didn't pay the 50,000 entrance. Yeah, everyone else paid the fee. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Great stuff. But, um, yeah, I hope I get to see you guys tomorrow at La Mesa. This has been a really fun way to end the year out. And uh, I hope you check out Kevin's stuff too. I, I, I didn't even mention him. I saw what definitely I well, yeah, probably like three people who haven't met them before. But for you three guys, I hope you definitely check out Santa Mo's stuff. My brother B is here, and uh, like me, because we have the same parents, he's also in Nigeria. So I'm sure you're having a hard time even staying away from me. The table with all this African stuff. He was actually born in Nigeria. He was the only one of my siblings who was barely at all left. I'm like, okay, too much information, probably. That's true. Okay. But then also, this the composition. He's a, he's a great author and stuff like that, so let me get to check some of this stuff out online and things like that. But uh, uh, Kevin, if you just want to explain a little bit on your idea of what expansion tour is, I'll get in line too. It'll be awesome. And yeah, how does that sound? I can see that control stuff too. Counting waves on the beach. Counting waves. I told you I'm checking my schedule. My watch is still in London tide. I raise rent to park on.